All right, if you would, turn your Bibles to the book of Mark, in the 8th chapter. We're going to start our reading in chapter in verse 34 of Mark 8. <clears throat> verse 34, uh, chapter 8 of the book of Mark. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Amen. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And that this morning you should it should open a lot of ears and eyes and make you think what shall a man give in exchange for his soul then it says whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my word in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father with the holy angels. Amen. So in our lesson this morning, there is quite a bit here that we need to think about, uh, we need to uh, ponder upon, we need to study upon, we need to pray about, we need to ask the Lord to help us with the understanding of these words because uh, they're very important. Uh, they're, it's the most, it's, it's some of the most best scriptures you can use, we'll use it in that words that a Christian can use uh, to uh, get himself in the gear of thinking. And it's also something that a person that doesn't know the Lord needs to hear. Amen. And so this morning we'll try to make a few comments on this and read back again through it. And then we will go over to John 12 and, and read a little bit more. But here, as he... Uh, uh, was talking to them uh, after he had uh, here and before he got to this what it says here but when he had turned about and looked on his disciples he rebuked Peter saying get thee behind me so we see here that Peter had uh, uh, got out of step with the Lord and uh, these scriptures that we have read are for are us that are not close enough to the Lord we don't praise him enough we don't think upon what he does for us so right notice in verse 34 and when he had called the people unto him with with his disciples also and peter was there uh he said unto them whosoever will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me now first of all <clears throat> in order to be pleasing to god Jesus says here that a man must deny himself and take up his cross and follow, follow him. So we see here that he uses the word his cross. Now he, to me, he is saying, hey, you've got a cross, I've got a cross, everybody's got a cross to bear. Now my cross may not be the same as Brother Terry's cross. Right. Brother Terry may not be like the same as Brother Larry. And so we know this morning that we've all got crosses to bear. And whatever and however the Lord wants to use us with this, that's what the, he, is, he is pointing out to us and saying this morning, this is what you need to do. You need to bear that cross. And how do you bear that cross? And that is that you put him first. And when you put him first, you're putting the flesh in the back. Amen. And when you do that, then you're interfering with the flesh and what it desires of this world. But anyway, this is what the Lord says for us to do is to deny, deny ourselves and to take up that cross 
uh, that he has given us. And it may be preaching, it may be witnessing, it may be singing, it may be teaching, it may be uh, visiting, it may be sitting on the pew and praying. But listen, we've all got a cross. And if we ain't got a cross, listen, there's something bad wrong with us. Right. Because uh, I believe this morning that there is something in each one of the people that is, belongs to this church that is saved. I believe that the Holy Spirit speaks to them. I believe that a lot of times we push it off and say, well, that's not for me. And this is what he's talking about. Don't you deny that cross that you have because the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart and he tells you, hey, you need to do this. Or, and, and listen, people, it don't, it, it, it's the simplest thing in the world and the flesh is, oh, that's, that's not for us. But listen, if it's to come down here and walk around through the church building and thanking the Lord and praising the Lord for the building, if it's going out there and cutting the grass or if it's going out here and washing the windows or whatever it is, if the Holy Spirit lays it upon your heart to do it, I suggest that you do it because I believe that it's that one of the, the types of cross that he has right. asked you to do. And you never know what kind of a an uh, effect you will have on someone else if you're out here uh, doing something in the church building or if, if whatever it might be, a witnessing or what, you don't know, you won't know, maybe until after you stand before the Lord, what effects that had on you. So he's saying this morning, whosoever will come after me, and that is <clears throat> through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one that speaks to your heart. And regardless of what you think about it, I know for a fact that the Holy Spirit speaks to people's hearts right. and tells them things that, that God would have them to do. And so he says, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. And that is a great problem this morning, is denying self and putting God in first because self, self is very, very... Uh, stingy, right. very uh, uh, haughty, mm -hmm. very wanting its way. But listen, we have to take in consideration that <clears throat> when we stand at the judgment seat, that the flesh is not going to look at the spirit and say, uh, you're all right. But it's going to be God himself and he's going to say depart from me or welcome or whatever the case may be with each individual. And so here for he says for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake. And the gospel, the same shall save it. Now, a lot of times people say, well, he's saying about losing his life. And does that mean getting killed? Well, it could mean it. Mm -hmm. there's, been, there's been uh, people before us that were killed. Uh, and even in the, uh, some of the old song books and all this, uh, there was, uh, and the old Bibles and things, there were people that were killed because they wrote songs, because they uh, tried to write down God's word and things like this. But again, it's not every time that you have to give your physical life for it, but that you need to put it back and, and, and make it deny the flesh. Over in, I want to read something in John 12 to you this morning, just for, if you uh, bear with me a little bit till I get there. In John 12 and verse 20, concerning this, this verse here, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. In verse, uh, chapter 12, verse 20, uh, he says, uh, the son, in the, And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. Now this was after Lazarus was raised from the dead. And the same came there for to Philip, which was at the Sedia of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sirs, we would see Jesus. Now, I thought about this. And listen, that's the attitude that we should have this morning. You bet. We should see, we should have a desire this morning to see Jesus. We should have a desire in our hearts this morning to know what Jesus would have us to do. 
And so again, we come to this thing of following the, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will work in, in us and tell us what we need to do. And so our desire to see Jesus is very, uh, should be very strong in us. So he said, then in verse 22, Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and, and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. Now, Jesus said, answer them, them saying, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Talking about his death. Verily I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground. Now a corn of wheat is just one little grain of wheat. It falls in, and he's talking about falling into the ground. And he's using that as a type of death, burial, and resurrection. But here, notice here that we don't have to follow in that in that in that state we do not have to go into the ground to die and go into the ground and be resurrected but we have the the privilege and honor of living here upon this earth and being a testimony to the people about the lord jesus christ and that's the way that we live that's the way that we we continue to live so he said here verily verily i say unto you except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die it abideth alone. Now this grain of wheat that he's talking about, listen, it could lay in a garner somewhere, in a barn somewhere, and never have mounted to anything. It would have laid there, and maybe it could have, but if it had got enough moisture, maybe sprouted, but it would have never produced any fruit. Now that's the same way it is he's talking about here, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. And yeah, the dying is of uh, it dying and going into the ground. And it's the same way with Jesus as he was d died and was buried and was resurrected and ascended to the Father. And now he's sitting on the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. That is his creation. That's his pr pr product. But us, we don't have to die in order to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. But the Bible says that we, and Paul says over in 2 Corinthians, I believe it is 1 Corinthians 2, I die daily. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, he wasn't talking about a physical death. He was talking about walking out there and telling the people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was talking about being put in prison. He was talking about all of these things that happened to Paul. And he said, I die daily. But the thing that he was talking about was, I am glorifying Christ Jesus daily. And that's what, that's the only way that we can really and truly live. Right. Because listen, when we, when we settle in for the night and we go to reminiscing about what has happened during the day and we can have this within us, this, this peace in our mind, hey, I have done what the Lord had me to do today then listen, that's life. Amen. That's not death. Death is when death is when you are out here running after everything in the world and wanting to get all that you can and and hoard it up. Listen, uh, and we spoke last last Sunday about the fool and the man that built the, and raised all the stuff and built bigger barns and all this. That's death. Mm -hmm. Because God said to him, Thou fool this night thy soul shall be required thee then whose is this going to be well it's not going to be his because he's not going to be able to stand before god and hear well done thou good and faithful servant but he'll hear depart from me you sinner I, uh, you wicked sinner or whatever i never knew you and so this is life that we're talking about here so notice uh in verse uh 25 in uh, uh saint john 12 <clears throat> he that loveth his life shall lose it and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life eternal. So this morning, and I'm sure that we all know that sometimes it's, it's hard, it's definitely hard on the flesh. The flesh rejects serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we know this morning that uh, we have to just keep progging and progging and making it do what it's supposed to do. And here he's saying, uh, here he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it. And do you not hate the flesh this morning? Right. When 
when you try to make it do something. When you try to close your eyes of a night and that old flesh keeps reminding you of all those things that you could have done to make money or you could have done this to and sin. Listen, that's death. That's what, that's what this flesh does. And so here uh, he says, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man, if any man serve me, him will my father honor. Amen. Now, this morning, you know if whether or not you're serving God. Right. You know within your heart, hey, I slipped and I did this and I said that and, and these things. But listen, deep down, you have that desire to keep serving God. God honors that. And regardless of what the devil comes to you and says and tries to hinder you and take things away from you and make you say that you're not doing it, listen, you can put him on the back burner. Because mm -hmm. listen, he is a he is a devil, and that's all he is. But if you're you know within yourself or not, whether you love the Lord. And right. So here he said, here uh, if any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say, Father? Save me from this hour. But for this cause came I into this hour. So this is something that you need to remember when your flesh goes to rebelling against you as Jesus said here the hour has come Amen. and he listen he worried or he dreaded or there was something about him that he said father if it be thy will this that this cup might pass from me so you know there was there was there was something there and it's the same way with us this morning uh, and when and when uh, we try to do what God would have us to do, there's always that thing that's pulling against us. And, and but we need to we need to straighten up. We need to throw our head back and say, "Devil, get thee behind me," because that's what he don't want you to do these things. So this is what we we need to to, to know. And I, I wanted to. Uh, in this, in this uh, scripture here in the verse 12, I, I had a little something else I wanted to bring out to you. Uh, here in this uh, 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 20, 20, I believe it's 22, Philip cometh and tells him, and, uh, and, and, and Philip says, no, it's not that. It's, uh, uh, well, in verse, that, that sir, we would see Jesus. And listen, uh, we sing, this song, Oh, I Want to See Him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it's wonderful to sing songs of praise to the Lord. And so, uh, as, as I journey through this land, singing as I go and pointing so, and all of this. But now, over in Second Chronicles, I want to show you something about the singing. <clears throat> Second Chronicles 20, verse 20. And I'll give you a minute to get there if you want to uh, try to turn over there. And it's talking about Jehoshaphat when he was going into war. Now Jehoshaphat had married Ahab's daughter. And Jehoshaphat agreed to go with Ahab to battle. And he said, have you had anybody, uh, any of the God's prophets to, to tell you? He says, I've got 400 of them here. But they weren't God's prophets. Right. But he said, yeah, there's one here. But he's always saying things bad about me. Well, they got him there. And he said, hey, go on up. But he said, I saw in my vision Israel like a stray bunch of sheep without a leader. And so we know what he was talking about. And it came true. Ahab got killed. But anyway, Ahab tried to put Jehoshaphat in a trick bag and told him to dress up like a king. But that's Ahab. Ahab was one of the wickedest kings. In the, but here, I want you to notice something. Then afterwards there, uh, Jehoshaphat had another problem with the, with the, with the battle. And in verse, uh, in verse uh, let's see, if I, if I, uh, in verse 20, 
of, of, of 20, of Second Chronicles 20, and there arose early in the morning, and they arose early in the morning, went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord. So your, your God, believe in the Lord, your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Amen. Now listen, this believing prophets and all, it takes, uh, it's the same way it, your faith has got to kick in. You've got to have faith in your pastor. You've got to have faith in, in what he reads and how he, uh, how he preaches it. And listen, here he said, you, have, you, have, you believe those prophets. Of course, he had knew about Ahab's prophets, and he knew they were evil. But here he says, uh, believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. And that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. So we see Jehoshaphat here and he had been, he had been wicked and there was no doubt about it that he wasn't in the will of the Lord all the time, but God let him live and God let him prosper because of the promise that he promised to David. And he, he told David that he would let his, his, his country prosper, uh, and he did. And so he uh, let uh, Jehoshaphat uh, do this. And so they were, they were in a battle. And this is the same way, I, I, the reason I'm reading this to you and telling you this, every day you're in a battle. Right. Your flesh, your flesh is a battle to you. Your flesh is not wanting to do what God wants to do. And so notice here, uh, uh, <clears throat> notice, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, praise you the Lord for his mercy and your throne. And when they began to sing, to the praise, the Lord set ambushes against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were come out against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, and they were fighting among themselves, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy another. And so they kill one another. Right. And here, here in Jehoshaphat, uh, he just marched out there singing and praising the Lord. And it, you know, it, it's it's a type. It's a type of it's a type of what we go through every day. We have these battles. Mm -hmm. We have these things, and we need to take courage. We need to uh, praise the Lord, and uh, you know, say with a melody in your heart. Keep 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 that melody going, and. and and, and I, I believe this morning that it will encourage you and it will strengthen you to do these things. So here uh, in verse 23, For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Syria and utterly to dissuade and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Syria, they everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude and behold, they were dead bodies fall into the earth and not escape. Amen. So they didn't have to, you know, they didn't have to uh, go to battle. They didn't have to uh, get out there and have them get killed. And the thing of it is, we don't either. We don't have to do that. It's foolish for us this morning to let the flesh control us and to right. let, uh, let our, our spirits be punished by causing doubt in our minds because listen our flesh will will cause those doubts to come right it will it causes us it causes us to doubt it'll cause us to and and we'll, we'll start wringing our hands and saying, well i don't know i don't know but let let the lord let the lord lead in your life this morning mm -hmm. let the lord take you this week and let him be your armor let him just put just put your trust in him because 
Uh, and I'm not going to say, hey, you're going to walk through a, 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 a stream of honey and that you're going to find uh, all of this and all of that to please the flesh. But I'll guarantee you, you'll have something to please the spirit. Amen. And so, and so uh, this is what this is what I wanted to uh, say to you, uh, or part of what I wanted to say. Uh, I thank you for listening to me, and I, I you know, I hope uh, I, and I try to. Uh, I, I, don't know, I don't want nothing, but I, I try. I try to seek leadership of the Lord. Amen. And uh, what I say. Uh, I believe the Lord's leading in it, and uh, I, if you'll try it, you'll like it. I'm sure you will. So thank you all so much for listening to me.